in this lesson, we are looking at units of measure. I will briefly introduce the different types of metric and imperial units, and then we will really be focusing on converting between metric units of length, area, and volume. So these are the two systems used for measuring quantities. We have metric and imperial. So some examples of units used for metric quantities. Length could be meters or centimeters or millimeters. Mass would be kilograms or grams. Volume could be centimeters cubed or millimeters cubed or meters cubed. For imperial, we have length being measured in inches, feet or yards. Mass would be pounds, ounces or stones and volume could be gallons. So we're really focusing on metric quantities. So these are the four main metric units of length that you need to recall. So you could put these on flashcards or you could just use these enough that you would start to remember them. OK, and I'm going to be teaching you an arrow grid method to work through these. So the arrow method is essentially how do you go from the left to the right? Well, we're timesing by a thousand. So the conversion between kilometers and meters is multiplied by a thousand. If we look at meters to centimeters to go from the left to the right, we've got times by a hundred. So that's that conversion to go from centimeters to millimeters. We are going from 1 to 10, so we're multiplying by 10, and the final one is multiplying by 1,000. Now, if we were to work backwards, if we needed to go from millimetres back to metres and so on, you would just divide by these four quantities instead. So these are my arrow diagrams. So here's an example. A sunflower is 232 centimetres tall, Calculate the height of the sunflower in A metres and B millimetres. So if we look at part A, we're looking at going from centimetres to metres. So this is the diagram that I'm looking at. And centimetres to metres, I'm using this bottom arrow. So I'm dividing by 100 to give me 2.32 metres. Part B is going from centimetres to millimetres. So this is the diagram that I'm looking at. And we're going from centimetres to millimetres. So we're going forwards this time. So I'm going to multiply by 10 instead. OK, so the next part of this lesson is looking at metric units of area. So I've got two squares here. They're both equivalent. They're both the same size because one metre is the same as 100 centimetres. So both squares are the same, it's just they're in different units. So if I find the area of square A by doing base times height, that gives me one times one, which is just one metres squared. And if I go for square B, I'm going to do 100 times 100, which is 10,000 centimetres squared. Now, because these two diagrams were equivalent, my area values are also equivalent. So I can make an arrow diagram out of that. So if we could think back to the units of length, meters to centimeters was multiplied by 100. Units of area just make me do that twice. So meters squared to centimeters squared is times by 100 squared. And division would be divided by 100 squared. So I can apply that to a couple of the other unit conversions. So if we look at centimetres squared to millimetres squared, well, normally centimetres to millimetres would be multiplied by 10. But I'm doing centimetres squared to millimetres squared. So I multiply by 10 squared and divide by 10 squared. So metres squared to millimetres squared would be times by 1,000 squared. And divide by a thousand squared. Now you can probably guess what you do for metric units of volume, it's the same kind of concept but I will still show you with the diagram. So we've got two cubes here, again they are both equivalent because this is in meters, this is in centimeters and one meter is equivalent to a hundred centimeters. So they're both the same size. So if I find the volume of A, to find the volume of a cube, you do the area of the cross section, which is this front face, 
So just as a side note, cross section is basically if you slice the shape up, the front face should look exactly the same all the way through. So that would be the square. So I'm going to do one times one, that's the area of my cross section, and I'm going to multiply that by the length of the of the 3D shape. So it's one times one times one, which is one meters cubed. To find the volume of B, I'm going to do the same thing, area of the cross section, 100 times 100, and then multiply it by that third 100. And that gives me a million centimeters cubed. Again, because both cubes were equivalent, their areas are equivalent. So I can make an arrow diagram. And to go from meters to centimeters, you would normally multiply by 100. But because it's cubic, we're going to multiply by 100 cubed and divide by 100 cubed. And again, I can apply that to the other two conversions as well. So you're timesing by 10 cubed and dividing by 10 cubed, timesing by 1,000 cubed and dividing by 1,000 cubed. So what we can say here really is if you memorize the metric units of length, you can then apply metric units of area and volume to those conversions. So let's go through some examples. So what I would really suggest is you pause the video at this point and try these independently. If you are not that comfortable to do that yet, feel free to work on the first one with me and then maybe press pause again and try the next one. You could do that for question three or four as well. So feel free to pause and unpause when you're ready to go. So for this first question, we are going from kilometers to meters. So we are timesing by a thousand. For the second diagram, we're going from centimeters to meters. So this time we're going backwards. So we're dividing by a hundred. For the third one, we're going from centimeters to millimeters. So we're multiplying by 10. And for the final one to go from millimeters to meters, I'm dividing by a thousand. So let's now apply this to units of measure for areas. So again, I'd suggest you pause the video, give this a go, and then unpause when you're ready to go through the answers. So meters squared to centimeters squared, so I'm going forward, so I'm timesing by 100 squared or 100 twice. Millimeter squared to centimeter squared, I'm going backwards, so I'm dividing by 10 squared or dividing by 10 twice. And finally, meter squared to millimeter squared, I'm timesing by 1,000 squared or 1,000 twice. And finally, volume conversion. So again, pause the video here, give these a go, press play when you're ready to go through the answers. So we're going from meters cubed to centimeters cubed. So I'm timesing by 100 cubed or 100 three times. To go from millimeters cubed to centimeters cubed, I'm dividing by 10 cubed or dividing by 10 three times. And to go from meters cubed to millimeters cubed, I'm timesing by a thousand cubed or a thousand three times. So we should now be able to confidently convert between units of measure for length, area and volume. Now the final conversion that I would like to show you in this lesson is litres to millilitres. So one thing that I am just going to change really quickly is that this should actually be a thousand. And likewise here, so I'm just going to adjust that really quickly. So to go from one litre to millilitres, we times by a thousand and to go backwards, we divide by a thousand. So let's go through this exam question here. We have a plant pot here, which has a capacity of 650 millilitres. Okay, Isabel has bought a plant pot. Will the plant pot hold 0.6495 litres of compost? Show your working. So what you really want to do is make sure that your units are the same. So either both need to be in millilitres or both need to be in litres. And I would say that actually working with millilitres avoids decimal work or decimal answers. So it's a little bit easier to compare. 
So to go from litres to millilitres, I'm going to times by a thousand. So that gives me 649.5 millilitres. Now this pot can hold up to 650. So will the plant pot hold 0.6495 litres of compost? Yes, it will with 0.5 millilitre space left. And that's it.